Okay, now as a follow-up to our discussion of the principles of therapeutic drug monitoring, we'd like to show you a couple of examples of TDM in action. The first, to adjust the dosage of the immunoglycoside antibiotic gentamicin during renal failure, and the second, to adjust the dosage of the anti-epileptic drug phenobarbital while management of idiopathic epilepsy. To prepare ourselves to understand the impact of renal disease on the elimination of some drugs, Let's now take a look at a very specific example of multiple intramuscular dosages of the aminoglycoside genomycin at a standard dosage of 5 mg per kilogram every 24 hours given to a dog. So that was a dog with normal renal function, let's say a creatinine of 1. A common scenario is the altered clearance of a drug that's cleared largely by kidney via glomerular filtration. An evaluation of drug concentrations relative to the accepted therapeutic concentration range, fairly consistent between species, allows adjustment of the dosage or calculation of the half-life, allowing adjustment of the frequency administration based upon the comparison of the actual half-life to the textbook half-life. Now, let's overlay the previous graph that we showed in the dog with normal GFR, now shown in dash green, with what happens when we change or when the animal's renal function is changed to be one-eighth of that of the previous dog, and the creatinine is eight. The resulting curve is shown in orange. With drugs like the aminoglycosides, in which renal toxicity is associated with drug concentrations in the elimination phase, that is when urinary concentrations are the highest, presumably, the goal is to avoid excessive trough concentrations. Anything, uh, the goal is usually to be anything less than 2 microgram per milliliter for genomycin. In the absence of drug concentrations for drugs primarily cleared by the kidney, Changes in creatinine clearance, or more commonly serum creatinine itself, can be used to adjust the dosage or, and or frequency of the administration. Common rule of thumb is that the average creatinine is 1 in dogs, so if creatinine rose to 8, as in this case, it would reflect a fall uh, to 12.5% in the GFR, and consequently, that would mean the drug clearance and half-life would change to 12.5% as well, so a drug dosage regimen adjustment could include the, the reduction of the dosage to one eighth, or the increase of the interval by eightfold, or some combination of the two. The goal being to get that trough level below two micrograms per milliliter again to reduce the tendency for renal toxicity. Let's now turn to when and how to, to time your sampling uh, for therapeutic drug monitoring. It's best to perform drug monitoring during a chronic dosage regimen after the drug has come to steady state, a concept we described in detail in previous videos and earlier in this video. In general, this occurs within five, three to five ha elimination half-lives as a drug is then within somewhere between three to 12 percent of its steady state. When performing therapeutic drug monitoring on a patient following a dose, the sample should be taken after absorption and distribution of the drug is complete. Peak relative to trough drug concentrations help evaluate drug absorption, whereas the drug's half-life can be calculated by sampling the drug in two blood samples, one after the peak and one at a fixed time after. Most of the time, as will shown in the next example, when peak to trough changes are much less significant, we're mainly targeting a mean concentration. Occasionally, it's worth sampling during the period the drug is being eliminated to calculate the drug half-life in that patient. This allows a fine adjustment of the dosage and or dosage interval and is shown in the formula that's on the screen. Let's now take a look at the case of a four-year-old male Labrador retriever, 30 kilograms, who had a diagnosis of epilepsy made five months before presentation. The dog responded to a therapeutic regimen of 
of 4 milligrams per kilogram phenobarbital every 12 hours. In the simulation I'm about to show, it's as if we knew all of the blood sample concentrations for a period of about one month. Let's focus on the time after the time steady state was achieved, which is, if you look in the textbook, uh, half-life can be anywhere from 20 to 48 hours for phenobarbital. In this case, you can actually calculate that. We won't go through this. Um, the peak uh, in this case is 33 micrograms per mil, and the trough is about 31. So we'll say that the average is about 32 micrograms per mil. And you can see there's not a major variation when we give a drug with that long half-life at every 12-hour intervals. Um, so the most important thing is that this concentration and this regimen was successful in this dog for, as we said, a period of about five months. However, now, uh, about five months or six months later, cluster seizures are again occurring even though the dosage has not been changed from what it was, 4 milligrams per kilogram every 12 hours. Although the changes in elimination occurred over a longer period of time, we, for the ease of demonstration, we're going to show you how the drug concentration would have approached a new steady state as if the drug elimination rate was instantaneously changed and the new steady state would have occurred more rapidly. The peak blood sample that is taken five hours after the pilling of the animal with phenobarbital was only 18 micrograms per mil and the trough is about 14 with uh, a mean concentration of about 16. So what has happened? Well, we know that phenobarbital induces cytochrome P450, increasing the rate of its own metabolism. Therefore, the clearance of the drug increases and the half-life shortens. And in fact, if we do the calculation here, we can see that the half-life has gone from about 40 hours down to about 20 hours. So if the drug administration rate, that is Q in our earlier equation, stays the same, then the steady state concentration, or CPSS, has to fall proportionally. In this case, it has now fallen to one half of what it was before. So how can we do something about this? Well, um, since we've measured drug concentrations at steady state, we know that to reachieve the concentrations we had before, which were two times higher, since everything's proportional at steady state, uh, all we need to do is double the dosage. And we can see that, and we're showing it here again, um, as if we immediately changed to 8 milligrams per kilogram. And you can see that the resulting um, concentrations lead to pretty much where we were before, uh, shown in red. And yet the difference is that there's maybe a slightly higher fluctuation between peak and trough because the half-life is two times shorter. For this case, that fluctuation is clinically insignificant, and so we would mainly be interested in making sure that we've got the average or mean um, phenobarbital concentration back to where it was before, where we knew it was efficacious using therapeutic drug monitoring, and indeed in this case, that moved the dog back to being asymptomatic with regards to seizuring. In summary, therapeutic drug monitoring allows individualization of dosage regimens, which is particularly important with potentially toxic drugs, but is also important to avoid lack of efficacy. Sampling is best performed at least four half-lives after initiation of therapy. When monitoring immunoglycosides, the trough sample is key to take in order to ensure that it is not elevated as this is associated with nephrotoxicity. Drugs without consequences for peak to trough fluctuation, you can target the mean plasma concentration at steady state and adjust the dosage proportionately. For drugs with significant peak to trough fluctuation, refinement of dosage and or interval can be accomplished by sampling at two time points, one right after drug absorption is complete and then usually at the trough, which allows the calculation of the half-life in the specific patient.